How are we doing guys? Welcome back. Today we are playing Path of Diablo once again and this is going to be a guide for you guys today. And today we are playing the uh, Rabies Druid. And this is Path of Diablo in Diablo 2 which is a mod. And I like to make these guides because there isn't a whole lot of video guides out there showing how to play the build um, before you jump right into skills and gear and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a brief little uh, gameplay tutorial just to kind of see if you guys like the play style. Um, some people do, some people don't. Um, so I'll leave a time code down in the description if you want to skip ahead to the actual parts um, past the gameplay and into the skills and tutorials. But um, once again, this is the Rabies Druid. And it's a really fun class. It's pretty tanky. You guys can see I have almost 3k life here. Um, it's a relatively safe build that does a ton of sheet damage um, and you can see we have all of our pets up here as well to help kind of give us bodies to protect us so it'd be pretty good for hardcore as well there is alternate forms of this build um, that's more hardcore emphasized I believe um, we can go a petless build as well um, but this is the preferred build that I like and you kind of just smack stuff and let it die really uh, you just smack it and kind of walk away um, you can sit here and mash on it as well. It can also deal with poison immunes as well if you want to hit him with the hit him with the right click over here using Feral Rage. But the main emphasis is going to be on the poison, obviously. And this build is far from optimized. I haven't put a whole lot of currency into this build. It's a relatively cheap build to play, uh, with just a maybe a higher end or two investment, and you're going to be kind of end game tiered ready. Uh, it's also pretty good as a cow killer. Um, in the beginning to when you're kind of just starting to farm your gear up um, But yeah, I mean you guys can see it kind of just melts Melts all kinds of stuff here I'm not gonna worry too much about the loot because we are getting towards the end of the ladder here ladder is gonna be resetting um, Sometime soon here, so I'm not overly concerned about uh, Any of these drops here uh, I should have restarted the game so I could actually track my chaos time um, but you can expect a f maybe a four, four and a half minute chaos if you're kind of really try hard in it. Uh, I just kind of screw around and you know enjoy myself. It's not the most optimum build. It's not a sorceress. You can't teleport, so you do uh, suffer from success in that that manner there. Uh, but you can see it's very strong. We're in hell. It, you know we're just melting everything. We're not really taking too much damage here, and the stuff just kind of falls over. Yeah, hit it and forget it. So I'm going to quickly show you guys chaos, and then uh, this build is also um, really popular for mapping as well. Uh, it's also uber viable with some slight changes as well as declone viable. I've seen some people do declone with this, uh, not this specific type of build, but with a rabies build uh, with some gear changes and some skill changes and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I mean this build is, uh, in my opinion, kind of broken, but it is super fun to play as. So. We can also swap here and put our cleansing on. And I'll kind of go over our, over our gear in a minute. Um, the other thing that I'm doing in this build here is you guys. Uh, what point is it? Eight. Yes, and see, I do have a little bit of magic find, so I could optimize even more and get rid of some magic find. Uh, I have zero poison uh, jewels in this build at this moment, I believe. Um, so that would help out greatly if you guys want to do more damage uh, for like D clone or something. And we have been slow cursed all run. That does not help run speed at all. You can see everything just dies, melts super quick. Smack that guy. First again. You'll probably just keep plague on if you're gonna run this, just so you can have your cleansing aura. Might be a little bit more efficient than the grief. Uh, which are going to be kind of our main weapons. Oops, there we go. Lots of jewels today. Run up in the middle here and kill Diablo, and then we'll kind of hop into the skills and stats and gear. You can see he goes down pretty quick. Yellow amulet here. 
Alright, let's pop into town. We'll check what we got. Check our fat loot here. We got a whole bunch of junk. Alright, let's go to Act 1 here. We'll turn our map off. We'll start with skills, because uh, that's going to be kind of your most important thing here. We'll hop into the skill tree here. We'll start off with your 20 pointers. Um, and your 20 pointers are going to be, we'll start with shape shifting here. Obviously, rabies is going to be your number, of, your first 20 point uh, thing here. You're also going to want to put 20 points into poison creeper. And I will link a hard copy of this guide in the description down below so you don't have to listen to my wonderful voice. Uh, so we got 20 points rabies, 20, point, point, 20 points creeper, poison creeper. 20 points summon dire wolf. That's just going to be that cannon fodder once again. They do a little bit of damage as well. Not too shabby. Uh, 20 points into... Uh, where is it? Lycanthropy. Right there. Improves damage when you're in a werewolf form, which you're going to be in. And that's it for the 20 pointers. You're also going to want to throw one point into Heart of the Wolverine. And one point into... Um, I like to throw a point into Oak Sage as well, right? Uh, this is pretty good if you're farming like more maps and less bosses. This is what's going to give you that attack rating and allow you to hit stuff a lot more often. Um, some other things you can do, you can throw a point into uh, Poison, or I'm sorry, Solar Creeper. You want a max Poison Creeper. Throw a point into Solar Creeper as well. That's going to increase your mana regen. Throw a point into Fury. Um, you know, poison Immunes. And then one point into carry on vine as well. Right. Your carry on vine. I actually didn't throw a point in the solar creeper. Uh, I use these two. That's going to replenish your life and then give you that extra poison damage. Um, and then you're going to have some points left over. So some other points you can do. Um, obviously you're going to need all your prereqs like feral rage. Um, I've got a lot of points into feral rage. Um, but there's more potential to kill your uh, poison immunes if you're going to do. Uh, Especially T1 maps, so I think there's a lot of poison immunes in T1 maps. Um, you can throw more points into Heart of the Wolverine um, just to get that attack rating up. You can throw into more Heart of the Oak. Um, I would say you'd probably save that one for last unless you're hardcore or you're doing um, more bosses and stuff like that. You can go more Oak Sage. Um, or you could dump a bunch of points into Bear, which I haven't done that either. The 11 points are going to be my single point ones uh, with my add-ons and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for that. So I'll go that one more time. 20 points Rabies, 20 points Poison Creeper, 20 points Summon Dire Wolf, 20 points Lycanthropy, 1 point uh, Heart of Wolverine, 1 point Grizzly Bear, 1 point Solar Creeper, 1 point Fury, and 1 point Carry on Vine, and then the rest I dump into Feral Rage. Alright, so let's hop over to the stats page here, which is A, not S. Uh, my stats are going to be a little wacky just because of my gear and I didn't have a respec token. Uh, but ideally, you're going to want 156 strength, and that's because you're going to be using a storm shield, which requires 156 strength. Um, this is actually probably, no, it only requires 79. Uh, but yeah, you're going to need at least 156 strength, um, and then you can glitch that on, uh, strength bug it on. You see it gives you 30 strength, so that's up to you guys if you want to do that. Um, next, you're going to go for max block here. Yeah, I got 75% block chance. Going to want to keep that that max block at 75%, especially if you're doing Ubers with this guy. Uh, yeah, keep it at max block. Everything else is going to Vitality. No energy, just like normal. You can see my resistances are all maxed out. All right. Uh, so we'll hop over to gear next. And uh, what should we start with? I guess we'll start We'll start at the top. We'll go with the helmet. Uh, right now, I am using Jalel's. Uh, three socketed corruption would be the best. I only have a two socketed. Like I said, I haven't pumped a whole lot of currency into this build, um, and it's still extremely strong. Uh, so you can do a Jalel's. You can also do like a plus five rabies pellet with some poison facets in it. Um, the main thing is you have to, this top right here, you have to have a melee splash damage jewel in your build somewhere. It's going to make your, your clearing just so much better. Um... In, and for cows and you know chaos and maps and everything get get that melee splash in there uh, as far as anything else you can use poison facets uh, I've got the topazes in there for the magic find right now um, but yeah uh, next we'll go to chest you can see I'm using a Nas chest um, best in slot is probably going to be Enigma if you want that run speed that clear time um, another really strong uh, 
armor would be like a COH Chains of Honor. It's going to be really good. Uh, very well rounded. If you want a pure damage option, maybe go with Bramble. Um, some other kind of budget build would be like this knowledge plate. You'd, you'd want four sockets ideally. Um, more magic find, you could do Scolders, four socket of Scolders, or a four socket of Tarasha plate, something like that. Um, but yeah, any of those any of those different armors will all work. It's not super super critical. Uh, belt Verdungos. Uh, if you're doing Ubers, you're gonna want um, Thunder Gods just for that lightning sword stuff like that. Boots, you can pretty much use any of the typical boots. You can use Water Walks. You could use uh, Gores, War Travs, Sandstorms. Try res boots, double res boots, whatever you got. It doesn't really matter. Not super critical. I'm using water walk. I've used the, I've got gores in here. You could use the gores as well. Just for that crushing blow. Kill bosses a little bit quicker. Um, for the gloves, triangle is pretty much mandatory for the poison on this guy. 25% increased poison damage. Uh, anything else is just bonus. Amulets. I'm using a plus three Maras. This is probably like one of the most expensive things. You can see it's a only a 20 resistance plus three Maras that I have, which is kind of ironic, but you know, it is what it is. That's what I'm using. Um, you can also use like a plus three shape shifting amulet if you wanted there. Um, once again, it doesn't super matter. I use this just for the plus skills, right? Um, rings, I'm rocking a BK ring. Uh, this one happens to have FCR on it. Um, you probably want a 5% one, not a, um, not a 3% in the FCR. It doesn't really matter for this build at all. That's what I had. So I threw it on and then definitely get yourself a Raven Frost that cannot be frozen, cold absorbed, um, and the attack rating are all really good for this build and the dexterity always helps. You are a druid. Uh, best in slot ring would probably be instead of a BK, probably a wisp projector just for the damage bump. Uh, next we'll go down to weapons. Uh, you guys can see a, the main weapon I use is a Grief in a Phase Blade. Not super expensive. All you need is that low rune. Malice are pretty low end runes anymore. Um, in a Phase Blade is the big thing. You want that attack speed. Um, and it's got pretty, pretty low dexterity, low strength, all that good stuff. So you won't have to worry about that. In your offhand, you're going to run a Storm Shield. Four Socketed would be the best corruption. That's what you want in this slot. Is a four socketed and then on swap um, I am running plague which is cham foul um um pretty good starter weapon it's a lot easier to get chams than it is to get a low rune so maybe if you want to start out with this and then uh, work your way back up to the grief um, that's what I did start with the plague it's got the poison nova on there which is nice but you're really using it for the cleansing aura um, you also get some damage to demons and minus 23% enemy poison resistance um, so yeah, this is very, very good for any poison-based build. Um, a lot of people, what they end up doing is actually throwing this guy on their mercenary for that cleansing aura. Um, some other weapons you could use um, would be like a Death's Web or a uh, four-socketed Plague Bearer. You want to just destroy cows, something like that. I don't, I'd never made those. Uh, I stuck with this Plague and Grief. That worked pretty darn good for me. Yeah, my swap here, I also have another uh, Terrible Storm Shield. Only one socket on this one. Got the diamonds in it for the extra resistances. Uh, next we'll move on to our inventory. Um, so ideally you're going to want one torch, one ante. I don't have an ante. Just got a torch. I got a 1714. Not too bad for the torch. Uh, never, like I said, never got an ante. Um, you're going to want shape-shifting grand charms. I've got a couple of those. Shape-shifting. Yep. Going to want a couple of those. Lifers. And then ideally you're going to want life res small charms till you max out. Um, I've got a bunch of magic fine and just kind of some random small charms. But ideally you want those lifers in there. Um, I don't need any more resistances. I am maxed on resistances. So I am good there. As far as mercenary, kind of got a bunch of different options here. It doesn't really super matter. Like I said, a lot of people will throw the plague on here. I run on this a Reaper's Toll. Four socketed shaft stop and a crown of thieves with a melee splash in it. That seems to keep him alive pretty well. Uh, you can also use a fort or a treachery here. You can use a vamp gaze or a steel shade for the helmet. Um, and if you decide to go with a plague and a uh, storm shield, if you want to go to like an act three. 
And then this guy is the offensive one, I believe, for the Act 2 Mercenary. You're going to want the, the Mercenary that gives you the Blessed Aim on there just to give you that extra attack rating, just to make sure you're really nailing those. Um, I, I can throw some uh, something in here to make this guy a little bit better. Uh, probably don't need Shales. I don't know why I did that. Maybe for the uh, attack speed or something, 80% increase attack speed. Probably something better I could have done with that Reaper's Toll, but uh, I was just screwing around seeing what it would do. Um, but yeah, that's basically it as far as that. So we covered our stats here, our all of our gear in here. Like I said, the only critical piece is going to be this, and then your weapon, whatever weapon you're going to use. Everything else that you can kind of start off small and work your way up. Four socketed this. You can go with Enigma, Bramble, Chains of Honor, anything. Doesn't super matter. Um, it's a pretty laid back build, as you guys kind of saw. I don't got a whole lot of stuff in here. Let's see if I got a good map. I got a desert. Uh, let's do, we'll do that one. We'll kind of just show you guys what this thing can do in maps. It, like I said, it's a pretty strong build. Well-rounded, pretty tanky. Um, you guys can see I only actually have 900 life without my um, werewolf up. And I do just fine. And we'll hop in here. T2 map. And you guys can see everything, even in here, everything just kind of dies. And that, that, that plague just really spreads from monster to monster. You only got to kind of hit them and then forget about them. Makes it really strong for these dense maps. A small charm there, we'll grab that. Really fun build. It's one of those builds that you can just kind of zone out. You're not too concerned about, you know, dying. You're not concerned about having to macro a bunch of abilities. You just kind of hit stuff and watch it die. Easy as that. Very fun build. I enjoy this build a lot. The only thing you kind of got to watch is make sure your uh, your pets are staying alive. Open up a dire wolf. Been a while since I played. <laughs> I can't remember my hotkeys. Yep, just kind of run through. Have a good old time, kill some stuff. These guys are poisoning me, and so you can right click those guys, hit them with the feral rage. Got a little ring there. Grab that. T4 is probably going to be the best map for this guy. I actually had one. I could have burned it, but... I'm still trying to save some of my stuff. I really want to get some more of these builds out before the new ladder hits here. I think it's going to drop in January. At least that's when he's uh, having the pod con, so... That seems to be the idea. Maybe late January or early February. And I am excited. I don't know what I'm going to play yet in the new season. I might play this. I could go Fire Claw. Maybe uh, an Elemental Druid of some sort. I haven't played Barbarians in a while either, so I could go Barbarian as well. Oh my god, look at all these charms. Yes, and see, everything just dies so quick. It, like, it's not even, not even a challenge. See my sheet damage, I got almost 60,000 sheet damage at this point. So I guess some of my guys recast it here. The good thing with having the plague on your character is you can decide when you want to use your cleansing aura. You also get the Nova Spam, which I think looks cooler. It's always fun having stuff erupt out of you. Another full room. I want to see if I can find the boss for you guys, just to... So yeah. How that goes down.
Alright, is this him? This should be him. Kinda messed up all my summons really quick, didn't I? Man, these archers do hurt. There he goes. We got another T2. Yeah, it's a safe build. Didn't have any issues with that. I used a couple juvies, but nothing big. And I didn't actually have to use juvies. I probably could have healed through it. Or bring antidotes, whatever. No biggie on that one. Like I said, not a big deal. And the main issue is I lost my, uh... My Oak Sage. Well, I could recast him. Stuff like that, you know. But yeah, boys, that's going to be it. As you can see, very simple build. Point and click. You're not worried about macros. All you're worrying about is, you know, keeping all your summons alive if you really care. If you don't care, you can always go with something else. Um, as far as, like, the, the non-summoning version of this Drew, which maybe I'll, I'll do a guide on that guy as well. All the gear is going to be basically the same. Um, for the most part, you're just going to go slightly... Uh, going to go no pets, basically. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like and make sure you hit subscribe. If you want to see more of my videos, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down in the comments below if you have any questions on this build. Uh, I've been playing it for a little bit now. I, I think I got the general grasp of it. Um, if you have any questions on it, obviously feel free to ask. And if you want to see any other videos like this, if you want to see more druid builds, you want to see more barb builds, sork builds, whatever, let me know down in the comments below and I will do my best to oblige. Uh, like I said, hit that sub button and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Adios.